Ooh, what is up guys, and of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with yours truly, Das and today I'm going against Xenon, and uh, yeah, you guys know exactly who this guy is, he's a very good friend of mine, and one of the best pocket zoomers I do know about, and um, basically we're dragons, and uh, as dragons we're forced to battle each other with the same kind of strategies, and this battle was really, really strange, and I don't mean it in a bad way, I mean that at uh, it just, it didn't really work for none of us, and it was very strange to, you know, trying to cope with that, because the hacks was everywhere, the um, situations were extremely, very, very weird, and we're both using sets that are very, very unconventional, either though our Pokemons are quite common, which meant that none of us actually really knew what we were doing, which paid off as a very, very strange game, and it actually came down to a pretty close game because of that. So, just going at it, I guess. Um, he got Laudios, Manaphy, uh, Torterra, um, that is Moltres, Tauros, and Raikou, and I do expect Raikou to come out without a doubt in my mind. I myself use Volpeat, Slowbro, Hillisk, um, Hippowdon, Stoutland, and Assault with Miloetta, and I'm using Volpeat as, um, as a fake out, I guess, because it actually is physical build with U-turn and has... Uh, it has Prankster and Trick, so it can pass on the Choice Band, but that is as far as it goes. I mean, it's pretty much fakes the special sets just to hit up really, really hard. And I was basically scouting here at the start when it was going off. And other than that, I really just needed to overpower Xenon. Xenon is a much better late game player than I am, which meant that I really needed to dent his team pretty early to even stand a chance against a player like him. And you're gonna see how that really works because I was really stressed at the start here, and yeah, it just it really shows. So anyway, let's. So the start here was actually really, really decisive for the both of us because I will start with the Vol base, which is a physical set, like I said, and he'll just go for Raikou. I did expect to go for a Volt Switch and trying to get momentum. I'll definitely do the same thing, but he actually decides to go for a Light Screen, which means one thing and one thing only: that this is a setup poke, which means that he is definitely packing the reflect. So, even though I do a sh good chunk of damage, I'm actually forced here to try to go for my Hippowdon and force him out with an EQ. So I'm gonna expect him to switch out to his defensive wall, which means that I actually can go for a fall right off the bat and try to do as much damage as possible. Because like I said at the start there, I really need to dent anything that goes to be dented. And uh, that is because I can't beat the uh, Xenon in late game, I just can't. So I'm gonna go for return here, actually hoping for him going for stealth rocks. He goes for earthquake, and he had a wood hammer, so had he gone for that, it will definitely take me out. So that was extremely decisive that I survived that. So we will decide to follow this thing off, and I really get that, because there is nothing in his team that really wanna take a choice band return, so it, it was his best bet, so no rocks this game. So anyway, the Lalios comes in, and I really don't know what this thing is all about, so I'm just gonna bring Meloetta, which is Assault Vested, and just trying to soak whatever this thing will do, and uh, it's, it becomes scary really fast, because it goes for Dragon Pulse, even though it doesn't do anything, he will actually show me that he got a Wish, which means that this is a semi-support set, and it also gonna show, because he got a light screen off the course, that the, this Hyper Voice, that 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 won't do like i i can't beat this i i just can't so he's going to introduce raikou and i was really over for a zyshock here hoping to do as much damage as possible because the reflect is off i did not pay it off and this raikou is right back on track and i can't really do anything with Meloetta, but i really just can't stop it either because if i switch out uh, anything on my post it's actually taking a huge chunk of damage from this thing so, Hyper Voice is my best bet, and just keep going at it. So, yeah. It's it's pretty halted at this point. So, of course, with the Raikou is down in the same amount of HP it was in that point before. So, I decided to go for a double switch, expecting him to switch out in this turn. So, really luck for me here. And, really, I was so sure that he was gonna think that I was over switching. So, I decided to go for an Earthquake anyway, expecting him to go for a Tail Glow. And uh, it did pay off, but Reflect is still inbound, which means that I, I'm basically doing no damage anyway. So I'm gonna force myself to go into Volbeat, actually trying to uh, get a choice point on this thing, expecting to go for another Tail Glow, but he will decide to attack. 
Luckily for me, he went for an unstabbed Ice Beam, and that is really, really lucky for me. Had I gone for a Surf, that would just have destroyed his Pokemon, of course. And uh, yeah, my best bet was going for Trick, getting that Choice Band, because I really couldn't have a setup poke against me, because that would not pay off well in the long run. So Volbit did a very nice job doing good damage on Raikou and uh, destroyed a setup poke, which is basically the function of that Pokemon. So that is incredible that that actually worked. So anyway, I'm going into the Bro, and really the only thing I can do, and I mean the only thing I can do, is Fish for Burns. I have no Pokemon that can cope with this type of Pokemon, so I just need a burn. I get the first turn burn, and that is... To be honest, that, that is kind of... <laughs> that sucks so bad. It really does. So, I think I decided to go for a Zyshaw character. No, I went for a Slack Off, expecting him to keep attacking and let the burn turns to kill him. So anyway, since the Lodios is here, I really don't want to know how much Dragon Pulse do. But then again, I kind of have to fish for the burns yet again, because <clears throat> as you guys saw, Meloetta, which is my kind of check to this, is not doing too well against it, and that just won't pay off in the long run. So I'm going to Bugra here. I know, because it's special defensive, that it can deal with that kind of damage. And the Dragon Pulse does, you know, roughly, roughly 30%. And I do get a Sandstorm up, and I'm just thinking, I might as well go for an Ice Fang, hoping for him to switch out. But he stays in here, and the funny part is that he goes for a Reflect type, which is a unique move from the Lodios and Ladias, which means that he will become a Ground type, first off. And second off means that this Ice Fang will hit, of course, with super effective damage, which it would have done anyway because of the Dragon Psyche typing. But that's not the worst part, and when I say worst, I mean hacks worst. Let's get those 10% going and get the free sacks. And really, I mean really, <laughs> that was not what I was going for, but really since the game paid off like this, it really just went to another kind of level where I basically got a momentum where I could just switch into my style and run off the bat. And here's where I really started playing play very predictable because now I feel extremely safe in my position so I switch into Stoutland, he's definitely falling off the mana fee for obvious reason of being burned and I burned the Chesto and I got a choice band, it's it's pretty much useless so not a bad switch at all and he's switching to the Tauros and really thinking about it, I should have attacked here, I really should have I'm not sure I could have taken out the Tauros but you know in conjunction or what what could my Stoutland provide if not like this was a key moment to just stand something so Lodius coming back in here, and he did predict me going for a Scald, and I will fold out this Lodius, and yeah, that that is unfortunate, but then again, it feels really fair, I never like free sacks, but what I do like is to try and to fish for those burns, because like I said there, I have no means of dealing with these Lodios or Lodias, so finally, and I mean finally, I get a crit, and I get a burn, that is just, that is just splendid. So the wish is kicking in, so he's getting some backtrack on here, and at this point I was just trying, alright, now I can wall him out, so I'm just gonna go right into Meloetta, and pretty much let the burn in conjunction with my damage take him out. So I do decide to go for a Shadow Ball, because I see that as a golden opportunity to get super effective damage, because the light screen is off, and it is almost enough to kill him, but thanks to burn, I do take this legendary poke out, and... Yeah, that that's like a headache out of the way, but the thing is here, I was in the dilemma if either I go for a Psyshock or um, a Hyper Voice. I do go for Hyper Voice and I fail, just barely miss the mark, so the Raikou is still going strong and sets up the screen yet again. And this is really like, the screen setup that Sino is doing here really stops any momentum that I could create. And it, it's working, it's working so goddamn well, it really does. And he also gonna show me here that he's a Scarfed Moltres, which means that I went for a Thunderbolt, but I won't outspeed, and a Fireblast will destroy my Meloetta. And that is just terrible, but I know it now at least that it is Scarfed, so I'm just gonna go for my own Scarfer, which should be in the Saladin the hill, is and go for a Volt Switch, and does some fair damage. And uh, from here on out, I had actually no real switch into it. I just went for getting some resisted damage because I know that the Fire Blast is resisted, but it still did some fair damage. I mean, resisted damage and taking 40%, uh, I don't know. 
and go into Salad in hope that Surf should actually you not know, finish it off. It doesn't, it just, it barely pulls through and it's going for the Vault Switch, very safe move there and I should definitely switch into my Hip Out on looking at it. So it's going into his Tauros and I really didn't feel like losing my Hildes just yet in case my Stoutland doesn't pull through. So we go for Rock Climb and I'll say that's some fair damage. But my Slower of course can easily wall that out and I'm going to take this opportunity to hope for him to actually switch out. And uh, he actually decides to say and go for another rock climb, but, but at least for thinking here that, alright, he's probably gonna expect me to go for a slack off here, so I can just seize this opportunity to go for a rock slide. I was though um, kinda um, guessing if that would actually worth trying to do, but here comes the Moltres. I did go for rock slide, of course, seeing through that he's gonna switch into Moltres, and uh, I miss the rock slide. So I'm basically alright, alright, at least get 4 turns off sand, so he can't finish me off with a fire blast, I can go into my stealth land and finish the game, right? It's, this is definitely one of the weirdest turns I think I ever got to experience through X and Y, and I mean, this has come like the end of an era. He goes for fire blast, misses, which is unfortunate, so I'll get another shot and go for rock slide, and I miss. Uh, I never experienced anything like it, and I know we can guess that the sand is bothering us both, we just can't cope with it. But really, really, this is how it's gonna go down. So anyway, I decide because of another sandstorm turn going, that Saladin obviously is not working, so I might as well just follow him off, bring in the Southland, and finish off something left in the game, because I know Moltres will not be able to outspeed a Southland in the sand. But then we go back to another issue, which is a very real issue that Sand is obviously going to end. I, I can't, I can't do anything about that. But I do expect him to go for reflector and try not, instead of trying to attack me. Um, and if it if it didn't do that, I think my um, my he power on could have dealt with it in the end. But it, I was just basically risking it because I really needed to have some way of finishing it off. And uh, I'm going back to my book right here, and I might have fallen off my stolen thinking about it. But I really thought he was going to destroy me with Rock Climb, considering the damage before. But there is some mid-max going on here, and it feels like I can actually take another Rock Climb. And he sees that, thinking I'm gonna go for a slack off. But really, I just wanted him to destroy this if I was, I can bring in my full for Stoutland to finish the game off. I just wanted to finish it so badly with my Stoutland, and uh, it kind of comes to show. So I go for the Earthquake, doing some... I guess lacking damage because the reflect is obviously off, which means or is on, which means I can't really do enough damage. So anyway, he's in the range now where I felt like I can go into slow bro. I can make him go or die from uh, the very very issue that is the rocky helmet. So I decided to go with that because really, well as is to do, I do have the game and I think Xenon did everything in his power he could. But the game just wouldn't have it. The game just wouldn't accept him as a winner. We got so much hacks going on. I got two burns without barely an effort. I got a crit burn without effort. I got an ice freaking hacks on him. There was so much things going on that just... It was never really a game about who was the better battler here. It was whether or not who could dealt or deal the best with the hacks, and I barely made it through, I really did. So yeah guys, like you saw there, my basic strategy that I had in the beginning really paid off, because I did get momentum I very much needed, because as you saw there later on in the game, Sino really found a way back, he got the momentum, he got things going, then hacks came into play and stopped any momentum he was going for, which was really, really unfortunate because I am not sure I would have pulled through because, you know, Xenon is such a strong play late game and I really stopped being very predictable because he got the momentum. He really forced me into a very tough spot. And when, you know, for the free sex gets going and stuff like that, I really, I got relaxed. I, you know, I found a way back and uh, that's basically why I win in the end. It really was that simple. And of course, Slowbro walling out necessary things and being able to take out Torterra very early on really, really helped out. And there was a risky move from my part and it paid off because of that. It really did. 
But as far as the battle goes, really, I mean, Sinon is, I would say, he's one tough battler. And um, I really, I want to battle him again without taxing Baum because he will have win against me three times. There have been three very, very good battles where the hex was not in bound, it was just a, overall the better strategist and battle or battler and like i said a, he's much more strategic involved late game so that is what i want and sadly the game kind of decided the battle for us and it was not anything bad by that because it, the battle became more about uh, the struggle to win the face-offs that is the hacks we both tried to survive the hacks instead of each other which was a very very different game i guess so, Sinon, you know, really, uh, Alex, thank you so much for this battle. One of the best ones I had because of the very reason of the win as it is. And, you know, we need those kind of battles too. It doesn't need to be all that serious sometimes. It really just needs to be fun. And I think this is definitely one of those just fun things you just, you just don't get every day. It's very fun to showcase. It really is. So yeah, with that in mind, guys, you know, thank you, of course, as always, for watching. And don't forget to check out Xenon 3120s channel. I know you guys are all already follow him, but still, I can't stress enough. One of the best battles I know, and he's he's worth every credit that he's get because he's definitely one of the good guys here in the community. And uh, with that in mind, guys, you know, thank you as all for watching, of course. And uh, don't forget to leave a like. And if you're new to my channel, of course, don't forget to subscribe. And remember, the sky. It's the limits. Have a good day and take care, right? Mm, bye.